If you're online and follow combat sports, then over the weekend, you probably saw something akin to this sentiment. Alexander Usyk beat Tyson Fury to become the first undisputed heavyweight champion in boxing since Lennox Lewis, but he is also technically the lineal UFC heavyweight champion, as Tyson Fury had beaten Francis Ngannou. I admit, this is kind of charming. I'm all for kicking MMA in the ribs, but people have pushed back on this in, admittedly, a silly way, saying that acknowledging lineal championships changing hands outside of sports where they belong is stupid. Which, yeah, of course, the entire thing is stupid. It didn't just become stupid because of the Usyk meme. That said, they do have a point. Not because trading lineal championships outside of sports is more stupid than tracking lineal titles in the first place, no, but because there's a real case that no UFC heavyweight ever held the lineal championship. Let's talk about it. So usually the way these conversations go regarding the lineal heavyweight championship of MMA is establishing what the fuck that means. There are two different popular lines. Tracking the lineage of UFC 1, as it was the first UFC tournament victory won by Hoist Gracie, and then there is the UFC heavyweight championship proper, won by Mark Coleman in 1997. The former is the most popular, but what makes these two paths very easy is that they converge pretty quickly. Hoist Gracie wins UFC 1, doesn't lose until he faces Sakuraba in 2000, Sakuraba loses to Igor Vovchanchin, and Igor Vovchanchin loses to Mark Coleman these three lineal changes happening on the same night. Meanwhile, Coleman has the UFC title, loses it to Maurice Smith, and then the line goes, Randy Couture, Ensign Inoue, Mark Kerr, Kazuyuki Fujita, then Mark Coleman again, who beats Igor Vovchanchin to unify the titles in the Pride Grand Prix. If you really want to get in the weeds here, it still remains bulletproof. The UFC Superfight Championship precedes the heavyweight as the first lineal UFC championship. And that goes Ken Shamrock, Dan Severn, and then Mark Coleman. Even deeper, there's a weird technicality with Mark Kerr's first loss. It's technically to Fujita in the 2000 Grand Prix, but Igor Vovchanta knocked him out with technically illegal knees that weren't known to be illegal by the fighters. So even if you count Mark Kerr's first loss as to Igor Vovchanchin, then he unifies the titles when he beats Sakuraba, and it goes to Coleman anyways. The line that follows after is pretty common. Coleman, Nogueira, Fedor, Verdum, Overeem, Bigfoot, Cain Velasquez, at which point it rejoins with the standard UFC heavyweight championship. So it would go Verdum, Stipe, Cormier, Stipe, Ngannou. That's how we get to Francis Ngannou as champion, leaving the UFC and losing to Tyson Fury in boxing. So you can say, well, technically, Tyson Fury is the lineal boxing and UFC heavyweight champion. Herka -derka 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 -derka. These are the paths that are standard. But I did say that there was a case that no UFC heavyweight has held the title. What the fuck does that even mean? Okay, so if we accept that the championships can change hands outside of MMA, then both of these lineages are completely wrong. We'll start with the Hoist line, because that's more fun. It's true that Hoist didn't lose in MMA until Kazushi Sakuraba in 2000, but he did lose a 1998 grappling match to Valid Ismail, a Carlson Gracie black belt who you might know as Davison Figueredo's former manager and all-around crazy person. If you look at Valid's competition records on the most reliable websites, he loses to Akira Shoji in October 1998. Because there's no date listed on his Hoist victory, there's a chance that Akira Shoji gets the Hoist title and then loses it to Igor Vovchanchin, who... <laughs> that said, this doesn't happen. The Hoist Valid fight happened in December, so Valid holds the title until his next loss, which, according to the most reliable database, is to Alex Stiebling, who was Pride's attempt to have a middleweight Heath Herring. The line from here gets pretty custom. It goes Stiebling, Anderson Silva, Daiju Takase, Rodrigo Gracie, BJ Penn. BJ Penn then loses the title in the eternal cheat code for Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, Lyoto Machida. At which point it goes to Shogun and then John Jones. Jones is famously not lost to anybody except the piss test, so you can argue that until Jones porked down and got to heavyweight, the Hoist Championship had never gotten into the hands of a UFC heavyweight. But as of right now, it's still resting in the UFC, safely merged back into the actual title. But wait, what about the lineage of the actual title, starting with Mark Coleman? This one starts pretty standard, so we'll pick it up at Fedor in 2003. Fedor holds the lineal UFC Heavyweight Championship and would lose in MMA to Fabricio Verdum. But where this goes left is in 2008 when he loses in Sambo to Blagoy Ivanov. I don't know a lot about Blagoy Ivanov's career other than that he beat Fedor in Sambo and he got stabbed. But as far as I can tell, he transitioned into MMA full-time in 08-09. So his next loss would be to Alexander Volkov in Bellator. The path from here I had no idea about and is only moderately interesting at the end. It goes Volkov, Tony Johnson, Shek Congo, Timothy Johnson, who is apparently a different guy than Tony Johnson, Valentine Moldavsky, Ryan Bader, and is now settling at Henan Ferreira, the current PFL champion that would logically fight Francis Ngannou if Ngannou ever decides to fight there. 
So Ngannou could still get the lineal UFC heavyweight championship. It would just be for the first time. So yeah, if you care about this idiocy, Alexander Usyk doesn't hold any MMA lineal title because MMA used to be a fun sport that intersected with others and that would funnel back into MMA eventually. Now, many are asking, hey, if there is a lineal championship in MMA, why is it the UFCs and not Pancraces, which predates the UFCs by several years? And I hear you, I get it, we all want a little Pancrace, but this is a dead title. It goes Ken Shamrock, Minoru Suzuki, Boss Rutan, and Boss didn't lose again until after he won the title. If you want to follow, like, the lineage, okay. Um, assuming that every fight was a title fight and Boss vacated it, which is, I guess, how lineages go now. Uh, it would go Masakatsu Finaki, Yuki Kondo, Jason Gotze, Masakatsu Finaki again, Guy Mesger, Semi Schilt, Yuki Kondo, Semi Schilt again, Josh Barnett, Crow Cop, Fedor. You know the rest. Most titles tended to filter to Fedor or to weird places, depending on what you count. But if it filters to Fedor, then it all ends up back in the UFC title, so it doesn't ever really matter. Other titles? Why would I do other titles? I just said they all filter into the UFC title. Okay, um, rings. Rings had an openweight championship, I guess. But trust me, it's easier to start at the King of Kings 1999 tournament because that's when I think Rings became a real company. Even if you don't start there and you start with the Rings Openweight Championship that totally exists and is a totally real title, I promise. <laughs> Kyoshi Tomura holds the lineal Rings title going into the 1999 King of Kings tournament, but it doesn't really matter because it filters up to Dan Henderson as the winner of the Rings tournament anyways. It goes Dan Henderson, Vanderlei Silva, Mark Hunt, Josh Barnett, Crow Cop. As a quick aside, this Josh Barnett to Crow Cop transition is different than the one from the Pancras lineage because that rivalry is hilarious. So it goes Crow Cop, Gabriel Gonzaga, Randy Couture, at which point it sinks back up to the UFC. How interesting. Are we done? Are we done? Shudo? Who's ever asked about the Shudo heavyweight champ? Okay. Um, Ensign Inoue wins the first and only Shudo heavyweight championship. And then it's Frank Shamrock, Henzo Gracie, I guess. Matt Hughes, BJ Penn, Nick Diaz, George St. Pierre. And GSP died choking on a chicken bone, so that lineage is dead. What the fuck do you mean to the Strike Force Heavyweight Championship? It's just Overeem, and Overeem beats Verdum, so it would go Overeem, Bigfoot, Cain Velasquez, and then merge up with the UFC title again, isn't it? No? Okay, um, it's Overeem, and then in kickboxing, he loses to Remy Bonjanski. So Remy loses to Semi Schilt in kickboxing, Peter Ertz, then Overeem beats Peter Ertz, and then it's just to Bigfoot, Kane, and the UFC title? What was the fucking point of that? The Super Hulk? What do you mean to the Super Hulk? Nobody knows about the Super Hulk! Okay, uh... The Super Hulk Grand Prix was a 2009 openweight freak show tournament won by Manoa Man, aka Ikahisa Manoa. He then made a belt that said Super Hulk, and it was very funny and charming. So it goes Manoa Man, Satoshi Ishii, that dumb shithead, Fedor, Matt Mitrione, Ryan Bader, Vadim Nemkov, who still holds it. Cool, man. That was so interesting. Aren't you so interested? No. You, I'm not doing the Deep Megaton Championship. You cannot pay me to track the Deep Megaton Championship. Nobody knows what that is. Why would I track? Fine. Yusuke Kawaguchi wins the Deep Megaton Championship. And then the line goes, Rob Broughton, Jesse Gibbs, Dion Staring, Damian Grabowski, Cole Conrad, who never lost and retired from MMA to become a milk salesman. Because fuck MMA and fuck you. So yeah, Alexander Usyk doesn't hold the lineal titles or something. Who cares? MMA sucks so bad, dude.